best bit of the day this. And they've all fucked off. Nobody to argue with. Or tell you that your hair looks terrible. Gives you time to think about all the important things. Do you know? It's the referendum this month. Us Scots have been discussing it all the time now. Have you made a decision yet? Don't get me wrong, these are trying times and I know how important this vote is. But it's so uncertain and it's all full of political gibbery glock. And that's the reason I'm here today, to offer my perspective on the recent televised debate, the last of its kind before the vote. And perhaps I'll offer you some clarity as I seek to find some myself. In appearance to the debate was First Minister for Scotland, Alex Salmond, head of the Better Together movement, Alistair Darling, passionate Highlander, Nigel Kirk Hanlon, and wee Jimmy Cranky. Getting off the debate is Jimmy Cranky, who was simply happy to still be relevant. Alex Salmond and Alistair Darling entered into a debate Salmond accused of not having any backup plans should any of his projections fail. I have plans. They're not very good plans, but they're fucking existent. I just wish Alistair would acknowledge that. Mr Hanlon then offered his opinion on the proposition to remove the Trident nuclear weapons from Scotland. Mr Hanlon attacked the proposal as a move of pestilent weakness and will leave our shores open to the European menace. After the speakers expressed their views, the debate turned to the audience. One concerned woman among them asked, Why does Alde not sell that Oreo cereal anymore? Who she was supposed to be asking was ambiguous. However, Alex Salmon decided to step in and commit political rescue and answered the woman. He assured her that, it is part of my pledge that we will strive to feed our free Scotland. With it, we will have fresh cereal for all. This ambitious claim appeared to be valid, as in mid-August it had been reported that Scotland's National Defence Service had already begun development of a national cereal. Salmon Shreddies The debate between Salmon and Darlin was where I felt very splintered. It was all too ambiguous. Salmon's words, his promises of freedom, it all sounded a bit too good to be true. But then again, the Scottish government have given us a lot of things the English haven't given their own. Free tuition fees, our prescriptions, nuclear bombs. And really, could Alex Salmon be much worse than the behaviour that's occurred in Westminster lately? Not even what happened lately. What's been happening for decades? They fucked over England and the rest of Britain. Touching up kids was just the icing on the shit cake. A further twist developed when the Doctor of Gallifrey stormed the debate by way of his time and relative space machine. The Doctor argued with Alex Salmond, declaring that Scotland would never become an independent nation under his watch because he had already time-travelled to next month and saw that they had lost. This dismissal of political tension angered Salmond, who then instigated a physical attack on the Doctor, striking the 2,000-year-old Time Lord with a pen he had gotten from his local bookies, causing him to regenerate into Frankie Boyle. After this, the First Minister commented, Time can be rewritten, just as how I rewrote my Wikipedia article to remove my past fuck-ups. This revelation caused a stemmer of booing to incur from the audience, Alistair Darling simply smiling and coming in his pants a little. As the programme broke for lunch, we turned to the trending articles on Twitter. One disillusioned Scotswoman declared, Salmon's not sexy enough to be my first minister, XO. One young man offered, if only Salmon lost a bit more weight, he'd really have the sex appeal to win over voters. Twitter then crashed because it's a piece of shite. The action resumed, 
The Time Lord equipment had been taken by the Scottish Defence Service. Jimmy Cranky had been kidnapped by a misled child abductor. And Nigel Kirk Hanlon sat down just to rest his eyes a bit. The match was now one on one, man on man. Fat cat versus fat frog. The debate lasted days. Darling chucking a circle jerk of repetitive and irritating questions. Salmon deflecting each and every one with cunning precision. Finally, what was left of the audience had died of malnutrition. The lack of sunlight in the room caused Salmon to develop even further into a werefrog. Darling then splashed his political rival with a strategically placed bottle of water, causing the First Minister to decompose into a gooey puddle on the floor. The debate was won. Alistair Darling was victorious. Or was he? When Alex Salmond melted into a puddle of green goo, it did rock my confidence in the yes vote just a bit. I mean, if your leader is a giant green toad who will collapse under any kind of pressure put on him, is that really such a good leader? You're not voting for Alex Salmond, you're voting for Scotland! But we are voting for Salmond. If there's going to be a George Washington for this Scotland, he needs to be a strong leader. And what? You think he's a good leader? Is a greater and deeper threat to our security than we have known before. In Afghanistan, Why is he always eating his own lap? I know what I have to do. For me, for you, for all the indecisive mug drinkers out there who can't decide for themselves, it's our responsibility to choose for the future. I've made up my mind. If you 